Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Matt Jarba. Welcome back to Three Buck Theater. I'm joined today by my friend Resident Justice to discuss episode number three of Loki, Lamentus. This, of course, having probably the uh, largest impact on the MCU as a whole, even though the episode to some people was not as action heavy as they would have liked. I think uh, I saw some complaints about it, but if you start looking beneath the surface, those people who are eagle-eyed on the uh, the Marvel lore, uh, they they're, they're nipped so hard they could cut glass essentially because of what this is now effectively setting up. And and I'm not gonna lie, in three episodes so far, Loki has done more to expand into Phase Four, Phase Five, and beyond than literally anything else has done. And we're only halfway through the series. It's um. It's nuts. Oh, for sure. Like, they're definitely setting up a lot of seeds. And not only that, I think, you know, I know some people are complaining a little bit. It's like, oh, the episode's a little slow. But I think it needed to take that time to set up Sylvie as a character and, you know, make that that their camaraderie that we see towards the end a little more believable. You know? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, too. So spoilers, obviously, uh, Sylvie is uh, the confirmed name of Lady Loki. And uh, she, according to some, we don't know if she is Enchantress. They did make a comment at one point in the episode about her being an Enchantress. But they've also, so I've seen some speculation online that's saying that she could be an amalgamation of both Sylvie's character and Lady Loki. Although I have a feeling the twists and the turns aren't quite done yet because there was a couple key reveals in the episode. And so the episode starts off with them uh, picking up right where the last episode ended with Loki running through the gate over to the TVA as he tries to stop Sylvie from getting to the golden elevator with the uh, to get to the timekeepers, which I'm still trying to figure out, like, if he wanted to get to them, is he trying to? I, I don't know. I, I still feel like at that point he was still trying to work with the TVA. You know, I, I yeah, it seems like Sylvie wanted to basically kill the timekeepers, but Loki wants to uh, bargain with them and somewhat manipulate them. So that's yeah. why they have like that conflict of interest. Yeah, she wants to because we know that she's been working on this plan for a multitude of years, but we don't know exactly what the end game is, pun intended. And it's just very fascinating to see the two kind of come together, especially when um, the judge shows up and she was, you know, she was going to wreck their day. Like, you know, she was going to wreck their day when she popped in. And then, of course, they blast through uh, to Lamentus One, mm. which is uh, that that blew a lot of people's minds, especially if you know old school lore, um, because Lamentus One, at least according to the Marvel fandom wiki history, uh, is the habitable moon of Lamentus, which is home to a sizable population such as miners and wealthy elites. Uh, in 2077, Lamentus broke apart and its fragments crashed into the moon. The wealthy inhabitants of Lamentus 1 attempted to evacuate on an ark, but perished along with everybody else on the moon. And this is the, you know, this is the extinction level event, the apocalypse that Lady Loki Sylvie could hide out in in order to make sure that, you know, nothing she does has any impact on anything. And now we're kind of seeing how that whole thing will play out, but we'll get to that. And uh, Lamentus, you were also saying, has uh, a little bit more kind of history, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you look it up, it's uh, it first appeared in like an Annihilation prologue, uh, the Marvel the Marvel comics of an Annihilation, which connects to a lot to Marvel Cosmic. So it's interesting that they would name drop and use it in this in this uh, context. Well, yeah, because the the history uh, is there that the Lamentus one is the moon, right? That's the moon. And then Lamentus is the planet and Lamentus outworld is located on the very edge of Cree space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Bring in the Cree again. Yeah. Yay. Whoopie do the Cree, the most boring aspects of Captain Marvel. They really were. Um, I'm hoping they make them better <laughs> in the future. They're like, I, I, Talos as a scroll was fantastic, but the Cree were just like, mm, okay. Uh, they were supposed to be these formidable villains as, as brought into shield, but you know, still, uh, so, yeah, so we know that clearly this particular place has a very interesting history in regards to uh, to Marvel Comics. And I guess it's going to do something to set up relatively the uh, at least phase five, potentially. I mean, there's been a lot of articles today, a lot of speculation about what is going to be coming out of this particular story. Um, you know, over on Screen Rant, they're saying that this has set up um, Annihilation as the uh, phase five crossover event. And, uh, you know, Galactus is going to play a big part in that. 
And what's going to be coming in Phase 5? Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. And possibly X-Men. And possibly X-Men and possibly Silver Surfer and setting up that whole thing. So yeah, why not start kind of setting the seeds right now? Because what happened in the last episode? They basically established the multiverse. That whole thing is still happening. The Nexus events are still going to hit. That part hasn't changed. And then they've also established uh, a, 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 a planet that has ties to the Kree, has ties to the Annihilation storyline. And even going down the road on that one, I mean, it's, you know, they're already doing secret uh, invasion on Disney Plus, And we know that the Disney Plus shows are going to be a lead in to the cinematic stuff. So secret invasion is probably going to or secret wars is probably going to end up being the next end game. And that is what effectively to some people, and it could be entirely wrong, is going to be what's coming next and that is or what's coming really far down the road but this is setting the seeds right now very similar to when we got to the end of avengers and you see thanos smiling it's like oh that's the big bad and it only took another six years to get to him right no no that, that's gonna be fascinating as we approach the release of secret invasion because to me that feels like an avengers level event on streaming uh, in terms of who they're casting and the potential ramifications it's gonna have in the movies at large so I'll be very curious as we move forward, not only in this show, but as we get closer to the release of that show to see like what the setup's going to be, if there's well, any the, at all. Oh, I, there's going to be a lot of setup. At this point, you can tell that that you know everyone who said last year, right, with, with Endgame having come and gone and Spider-Man Far From Home kind of being the cap off uh, to that phase and you know Tony Stark being out, Captain America being out, all of these things. Marvel's, I kept hearing this from all over parts of the fandom. Marvel's dead. They they they've effectively run out of juice. There's nowhere to go. Yada 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 yada. And I'm like, look, man, you cannot at any point in time bet against Kevin Feige when he's at the helm. Especially when you know that, he, like, here's the thing for me. People are after Far From Home saying, "Oh, I'm done." I'm like, how can you be done when the movie ended on a cliffhanger? Like, I gotta see what happens next. I'm sorry. And then you have Fantastic Four and X-Men. Come on. You're not leaving. The, you're not getting off the ship. You're gonna stay on. I know. I, it's such a weird thing. I always find that to be kind of funny. And especially now with establishing everything on Loki. And not only Loki, going back even to WandaVision and how uh, people were uh, absolutely hooked on that for the weirdness of it. And then I do feel the weakest series so far has been Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I, I feel like that was really kind of the directing more than anything yeah. else but i still really liked it it was still good but it was it was it was weakest of the three you know at this point and that's not a bad thing that's it sounds weird to say but loki has done something that even wandavision and falcon and winter soldier haven't done and that is just raise the stakes in a way that is just so fascinating yeah it continues to feel grand i think out of all of the show so far this one to me feels the most like a six hour movie if that makes sense yeah Oh, yeah. Well, because they kept saying that, right? Like Falcon and Winter Soldier felt episodic, but, you know, still like a bit of a longer movie. And WandaVision was just really good as as an episodic thing because it tied into the overall plot. So that was pretty funny, too. What I enjoyed, though, about this episode is really, you know, because, again, if you if you kind of start, if you look away from the bigger picture of it all, what the implications are, what you get is a nice episode. That's the shortest one, but it's got the most character development. And we get to start to see, we learn more about Lady Loki, about Sylvie, about what she does. And we get to learn um, about Loki and kind of how he viewed his mother. But there was an interesting thing with that in the train scene when they were talking about Freya. And he referred to her as if she was dead. Even though at that point in time, she is still alive. Right. I wonder if that's because in his mind, he knows he can never go back and see her. And like her future is already predetermined so that he can do to change it. So it's easier for him emotionally if he just disconnects himself and just says, okay, she's dead already. You know, there's nothing I can do and I can't go see her again. That would most likely make, the, yeah, that, I think that probably makes the most amount of sense is he's just trying to, because otherwise, because he knows he, he got his mother killed. Moby has showed him that. And so he's probably just like, crap you know he can't can't deal with that but i i still really enjoyed the scene where they were talking about his upbringing and they were talking about you know what they would do in regards to like the, i guess you could say when they start talking about love which look i know where everyone's going to be going with that but am i the only one that really kind of looked at that scene and went like they're going to hook these two up really you think so 
Dude, there was so much chemistry between them. At some point, it, isn't it gonna like, be weird though? Like, I mean, if anyone, if if well, if anyone is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or just in Marvel Comics, is gonna be so egotistical as to actively try to have sex with themselves, it probably would be Loki. Yeah, you're probably right. But it's like they do. But there, there is undeniably chemistry. There's undeniably magnetism between the two of them. And she's clearly into him and he's clearly into her. If anything, it's about uh, the the type of lifestyle that they lead. They're so they're so similar. There's that attraction because there was that line when they're talking about love and he pulls out the dagger and mm -hmm. he's using the metaphor and the dagger. And he's like, you know, at the end, the dagger disappears. And she's like, because love isn't real. And then like he's like, he botched he botched the metaphor. But the but the botching of the metaphor was done because he couldn't properly he was trying to explain it to her in a way that would protect him. But in reality, it's her understanding what he's trying to say, even though it's a terrible metaphor. And it's that understanding that's going to be a connection and potentially a romance. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the two of them ended up hooking up at one point in time. And that's a hot take. That's a hot no, take. No, no I, I mean, listen, I don't know if I necessarily see it the same way as you do in regards to that, but I mean, I would, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't intrigued by that idea. Because when, <laughs> when you put it, when you put it that way, it's like, it is kind of a very Loki thing to do to be in love with himself. Yeah. And, and when you've got a man and a woman who are sitting in a bar, right. And the world's at the end and they're, they're kind of like talking about when the subject goes to love, when the subject goes to connection when the subject goes to sexuality and sexual preferences, she calls him out as being bi. He confirms that he's bi. Gay Twitter went crazy. We all yeah, know it was a, there. Yeah, it's a big moment for the character. I know it's some a big... people were upset by that, but it's like, that's the comics and the character, dude. But he's, yeah, he he's a shapeshifter. He's done a bunch of things, and you can tell he's probably tested the waters. Now, has he had sex with, with men as a man or as a woman? We don't know. It kind of goes both ways, to be fair. I would argue that it probably went both ways, but at the same, none of that even really matters because the, that, that's what everyone's focusing on rather than the conversation itself. When, when you have a movie, there are tropes. There are tropes in these films. When you have a movie and the two characters, the male and the female lead start talking about past relationships, that, that that's only there to establish a, a, a connection. Yeah. I, do you think that um, with them bringing up the past relationships, that that's maybe potentially what the real motivation for Sylvie is? That something happened to someone she loved and she wants revenge against the TVA? No, because I think she's been a she was she said that she'd been like abandoned, you know, mm -hmm. or she at least implied that she'd been on her own for many, many, many years. And somebody is setting her up for this. Somebody is running it from behind the scenes that somebody is probably Kang. As we've been, you know, everyone's been theorizing or, oh, my God, it's Mephisto, right? The Half-Life 3 of the MCU at this point. <laughs> Who is the other character? I think it's Immortus, I think, who's connected to King as well. I don't um, know. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't read the comics, man. Like people, I have to kind of like look to get what other people are saying to kind of understand what is generally what's going on. But the thing is, is again, going back to the, just the relationship thing, like at one point they're talking about being hedonistic. And Loki's like, I'm hedonistic. And she goes, I'm more hedonistic than you. But then tie that back into the line about how in the apocalypse, when she goes and she hides, which, which apparently she's been hiding in these apocalypses for a very long time. Uh, she will go and he, they, there was that line there about how people won't turn her down because it's the end of the world and who gives a shit. So, right. so that's how she gets her emotional connection. That's how she has her relationships are in the apocalypse where they don't matter. And Loki has never found something that was real. And they both like were she, he set it up and she provided the, the outcome to that, the, the, the back and forth of it not being real on like what, two occasions. She solidified that they are absolutely setting up a romance. So whether or not, you know, we find out that she's uh, Sylvie, the enchantress, or she is a version of Loki. I mean, look, this is it, it could go to Game of Thrones territory, and I'm not gonna lie, I think certain people would be all for it. I just, yeah, I'm, probably. I mean, there were some people really into the Cersei and Jamie ship, so there really was, and was. There really was, you know. And I'm sorry, there was there was act there was an actual chemistry between the two of them that in any other situation, 
literally any other situation, you would stop and go, oh, they are totally going to bang pelvises. That is totally going to happen, you know, because they are going to find that connection and it's going to, you know, oh, geez, it's like they're setting it up. They're absolutely setting it up. Now, if it if it turns into a weird sort of thing, I don't know. We got three episodes left. Anything could potentially happen. But that was the key takeaway from those conversations, especially when it came to love, because you don't look, you don't bring it up multiple times unless you're trying to get to a point. You know, like you, you don't bring it up unless you're trying to like either solidify, like plant the seeds, both like, I don't know, like literally and f figuratively. Right. Right. Like, is there is, you know, you said that there's kid Loki. Hmm. Oh maybe. no! Don't make maybe. Kid Loki out of two other maybe. Loki's. No. Maybe you know there could be. I mean, you never know, man. Like stranger things have happened, I guess. So that could be. <laughs> I guess. I, I guess so. But now, now I'm kind of weirded out the idea now. <laughs> I'm just so everyone's focusing on their sexual orientation rather than the subtext of the romantic subplot. But anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on that because I know people are going to be listening. It's like Matt. God damn it, move on. Uh, so you know, from from there. We, we find out, you know, a, a bit more about um, the, the, what their plan is. And I like their plan of like, look, let's change the apocalypse. You know, I, I thought that was kind of a cool thing. Like, look, we know what's going to happen. We know when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen. We know all the details. Let's do what we can to stop it, at least to protect ourselves and to recharge the uh what with the time machine whatever it's called yeah the temp pad the, the temp pad yeah before they end up destroying it but when he gets thrown out of the here's here's another how did the thing get destroyed that's got to be an illusion on loki's part that's got to be an illusion because he said he put it in his heart and he hid it somewhere so she couldn't find it and then he pulled it out from behind his back so it clearly wasn't in that reality it clearly is still in whatever magic form it's in and he just conjured a broken one to trick her because that's going to be his end game, right? Because Loki's always going to be out for himself. He might trust her certainly to an extent, but he is going to screw her over because that is in his nature. And believe it or not, we already heard about that in the last episode when they were talking about going to Pompeii and, you know, Morbius, Moby's like, what, you're just going to like stab me in the back and leave me there? No, I would never do that. No, you've literally done it 50 times. Well, I wouldn't do it again. Right. You know, I mean, they're setting it up to where, yes, he absolutely would do it again, because at the end of that episode, instead of going with Mobius, who is a person he has established a relationship with, he ran off to follow Sylvie. So, I mean, obviously, they're setting it up to where he is going to already have it and he is going to be able to, you know, he tricked her. Yeah, it was just very weird, because like if that if that's not the case, it's kind of a weird scene, because like, why would Loki let his guard down and get so drunk like that? Like. I don't know. I remember Sylvie fell asleep, right? So who knows what Loki was doing while he was awake and she was asleep, right? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. It just, it, it's just weird. You know, that is a good point that you raised. So <laughs> it's, I mean, it, well, the thing is, this is the whole point is these stories, they do follow certain tropes. They do follow certain things. And that is true. I mean, writing in, in movies and television, they don't really change. The rules don't change. People like to have their expectations subverted, but in reality, it's a load of crap. They don't. They like to be certain ways. So if you watch enough content, as I have watched enough content over the years, you can start to see certain patterns emerge. Is that to say that I'm against them or that I think it's going to be like all kind of like reality breaking? No, these are just things that I, I, I'm calling out and I could be wrong. And to an extent, maybe I hope I'm wrong, but this is how I would approach writing these particular shows. And if I'm right, Marvel can hire me. I know what I'm talking. I could I could tell, write you a good story. Uh, but that being said, what I what I really enjoyed was the finale of this as they were trying to rush in to get to the arc and, and how lawless society had become at that point. Oh, yeah, yeah. It felt, you know, aesthetically, it reminded me a lot of the Guardians movies in a way, uh, which I think was a bit intentional, obviously, because it is like Marvel Cosmic, but I just loved like the production value in this show. I love the way like you know this alien world looked and like this like it reminded me a little bit, weirdly enough, of the of uh, of the movie twenty twelve, 
because I also had an arc and like it was the apocalypse that people were like trying to escape from with like the wealthy. oh yeah 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 it reminded so. me a little bit of that and also Snowpiercer uh, as well so I liked how they uh, kind of like took took some things from there kind of like yeah, I did the I show. did get a yeah I did get a Snowpiercer vibe off of that I did get that and I'm like oh that's kind of cool uh because they're sitting in there with the wealthy but none of the none of the poor people were able to make it on but this is the thing I don't get if if the people knew that the moon was going to crash into the planet or vice versa and lamentous one was going to be gone and there was the arc for everyone to get off why were the cops still trying to fight the rioters on the street that was right weird... it's like everyone's gonna die anyway what, what are you doing yeah i i honestly think that was just one of those plot things they had to add in there to add to kind of like you know yeah, establish the tension. intensity yeah mm -hmm. the tension of the ending because you know they're running away if things are exploding and it was a great one shot if you noticed it was i mean there was you could tell where there were the cuts but the it was very good in how it handled the one shot and i think they filmed this on the volume it i mean they definitely filmed it on a sound stage and i'm wondering if they filmed this in the volume i maybe thought i heard, I, I thought I heard that like they it. did uh, it felt like it because especially when they were walking for all that time because they were actually walking a fair distance while they were you know trying to get to the city and and i'm like oh yeah that i mean that's either a really big sound stage where they were able to set up everything or it's the volume and i think it was the volume because disney's going to be one that's like look we've already built this thing where we're spending 25 million dollars an episode you're going to use, use it, damn the it. Best. yeah yeah so i like that the effects are really great. Uh, they definitely showed where the money is going. This might be one of the reasons why the episode is about 10 minutes shorter, but I think it was very well paced. Now, the, yeah, the, it didn't feel like time was wasted at all. No, episode. it didn't. And it didn't even feel like that was in the, the case in the first two episodes either. People who were like, oh, my God, it's so long. It's so, you know, whatever. Eat my ass. It's so, you know, it was, it was establishing stuff. I'm sorry, character development and dialogue, allowing characters to talk and breathe and live in these worlds is a problem for you stick with reading i don't know highlights for kids you attention deficit having idiots anyway my hot take <laughs> i'm so tired of people when they get like that you know oh, i can't stand for two minute conversation you know these are the kind of people i'm just gonna like again these are the kind of people that like really never ha they, they never do foreplay when it comes to sex it's always just like get in get out be done <laughs> like that's really what it boils down to this is art to it, guys. Spend yeah, some time. It's, it's yeah. They're like, what? What do you mean? I gotta put the no. You, I'm here for me. Anyway, off the subject. Now, I will say though that I think the biggest reveal of the episode is one that we all basically knew, and it ties yeah, into we were the speculating on it before. Yeah, and and the beginning of the episode showing Sylvie in the mind of the TVA officer at a bar somewhere a couple hundred years ago and trying to uh, extract the information was pretty fascinating and then finding out that they're all mind wiped variants. So that kind of then opens up this idea. Now you were talking about the TVA being corrupted mm -hmm. and that might be whatever's going on here. And there's a lot of people out there that are speculating that Mobius is the one behind it. Really? I wasn't going to go that far. I think I've Mobius been hearing that. I've been uh, one of the, yeah. One of the rumors is that he's actually Kang. He's a variant of Kang. That's what I've been hearing. I don't know. What? That's, that's like that, that would be insane if that was that's true. an insane one. That's I've been looking at some of the theories and some of the rumors going around, and that's what I've been hearing from people. Uh, I don't know. Again, no idea. I don't know who really these characters are. Yeah, but it's, well, it makes sense though with the jet ski things. It's like, oh, he's remembering something from his past when he like when he used to just be like a normal guy, you know. Yeah. And same well, no, thing that yeah. other was like why he didn't remember like what a fish was. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. I I don't want Mobius to be a bad guy because I just love Owen Wilson in the role, but it would be the twist that we would really not see coming. True. And a lot of people really, you know, I think there's a lot. There's like again, go back to One Division with the speculation with how everyone really was going all crazy with it and and how it kind of disappointed people i think here they're they're doing more to kind of like give you pieces of the of the puzzle and and the internet speculation kind of feels like it's more focused this time rather than literally everything is mephisto <laughs> right mephisto is like 
I don't know. I think it's funny that people still think that Mephisto is going to be in the show. I'm like, guys, let it go. He's not going to be in this. Yeah. Now, here's a question for you. Here's here's this is this is a big twist. Okay, this is a big one. Mm-hmm. What if everything we saw once they got to Lamentis was not real? What? Yeah. So think about are it like you, this. Like an illusion? Yes. What if what if Sylvie was able to enchant Loki? And what if we're seeing it from his perspective and this is what he believes? is the world around him now that's a far out take right that's a far out take but sylvie is eventually going to be able to use to to enchant loki loki is going to screw her over with having the, the 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 little tablet by still having it and she now knows a good moment from his life that she'll be able to build that fantasy around in a moment where he has not it doesn't have as much mental fortitude Oh, yeah, we're totally getting a flashback scene if that's the case then. Oh, yeah, I have a feeling Rene Russo as Freya is going to pop up 100%, right? I think we're going to get something there. We're going to get closure on their relationship. And I think that's going to happen just from Loki's perspective because we got closure with Thor and Freya in Endgame, which was a beautiful scene. I love that scene so much. And Loki really wants to have that as well. And I think we're going to get something like that, and it might come in the form of Sylvie actually enchanting him because look he'll, he's gonna double cross her she's gonna double cross him it's just again the nature of storytelling yeah and it's just a loki thing to do right it's a very loki thing to do uh and so that's gonna be where the show goes in the next couple episodes i think it's gonna be pretty crazy plus now uh learning that the tva just uses variants as yeah there's some fishy stuff going on for well, sure and because who's behind it But it does go into, but it also goes into the whole theory from last week when Mobius was talking to the judge and she was giving him crap about the water rings on the table. And Mm. he's like, she says, that's only from you. And he's like, no, you know, he made the comment about it being another variant. But what if there's more variants of Mobius? (laughs) Yeah. Like, what if there's like tons of variants of everyone in the TVA? They just keep like... Oh, you know what would be cool? You know how like they, they prune them, right? They disintegrate them? What if they just like get like another variant and just like plop them in there? It's like Well what oh, happens really what happens when they're disintegrated? That's we don't know. Too. Where do they go? Because why would they disintegrate you? I mean, if if you're a variant and their job is to course correct you, like the guy in the very beginning, the 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 Goldman Sachs son, right? The executive son that was being a jerk and he got disintegrated right there for not having a ticket. But their whole thing, they literally just said that their whole point is to, to wipe you and put you back in the timeline. So it doesn't really seem to make sense that they would disintegrate somebody and effectively remove them from the timeline when their whole goal is to put them back in the timeline. So there's something about those particular wands that don't make a lot of sense because here's the thing, when they found Loki, You know, why didn't they just wand him right then? Why didn't they just disintegrate him right then? Right. You know, if it was, if it's not going to matter there's so there's something up with that as well that we don't quite know. And that that could just be over speculation. I don't quite know yet. Yeah. I was going to say, like, let's say that this isn't an illusion though. Let's say everything that happened on the Mentis is real. How the heck are they going to get out of that situation? Because it seems like it's like doomed for everyone. I would assume that Mobius would find them. That's like my theory if it's real, but I don't know. Yeah, I think um, I do agree with you on that one. I have a feeling that Mobius is because he knows he's going to know that they escaped from somewhere in the TVA, that they went somewhere and he's going to know that she hides out in the apocalypses and he's going to know to look for the apocalypses and he's probably going to go like the worst one is Lamentus and, you know, and just randomly show up. And I think that's going to be fine. I think that's going to be kind of their deus ex machina moment from next week. Yeah. Where he's going to show up and save both of them and then like capture them both. And it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, I mean, again, some people are saying like, I've been reading some comments and some people are saying that the show is, it's like, this was like the worst episode. It just didn't have enough action. It had the character development. It had the dialogue. It had the the seeds planted. It had the buildup. This was, in my mind, and probably not the best episode. I think the best episode is still the first one. 
but I still think like it's just on par with the last episode. And also the soundtrack was once again, amazing. No, absolutely. I think again, the soundtrack's amazing. The production design's excellent. I think you needed an episode like this again, this episode was establishing the Sylvie character and getting you invested in her and establishing that relationship between her and the Loki we know. You need an episode like this to take the time to establish that because otherwise, like, I think Sylvie is going to be very important for the future of the show, obviously. So if they didn't take an episode like this to establish that, you're not going to care about her when stuff happens after this point. You know Exactly. And they want and they want to like they want people to like her because Marvel is about having likable characters. And I already like her. I already like her. I, I do like her. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I know I'll, some people were like upset. It's like, oh, this, this actress feels like a miscast. She doesn't seem like she's going to be able to compete with Tom Middleton. I think she does a great job. I don't know why people are like so down on her. No, she calls him on a shit multiple times. Again, they're setting, they're setting up a romance. They're setting up a romance, whether it's going to be tragic. Listen, if that's the case, I'll give you like $5 or something. I'll be like a $5 bet. Cause I, I just don't see it. But if that happens, I, I, I would be very I'm surprised. not saying they're going to end up together and go raise babies in Asgard in another timeline. You know, <laughs> all I'm saying is there's going to be something more than platonic. Okay. There's going to be some, there's already establishing something more than, than a platonic relationship because there's conflict. There is uh clashing between them. And there's so much sexual tension, you could cut it with a knife. And they both like to smash. So clearly, that is going to happen. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Now, whether or not, like, you know, he ends up being him, or he is dressed as her, or she transforms into Freya, and we get a weird Sigmund Freud situation going on, (laughs) I don't know. It's Disney Plus, probably not, but at the same time... Chris Hemsworth, like Chris Hemsworth cameo as they smash in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, that would send Tumblr into a uh, that would, that would send Tumblr into a to a to a very weird place that I would not want to go into. But you might have a point there. But I think uh, we've covered practically all the elements of the show, unless there's anything we missed. Uh, I, the only thing I think of is I like the scene um, with the old lady with like that boom device where like they. Yeah, it showed the different because I think it established how they were raised differently. Loki was trying to be diplomatic and trick her, uh, but right, trying to be her husband, while Sylvie's just like, just break the damn door down and threaten her, you know? Yeah, I uh, like that uh, scene. Uh, 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 Patrice ain't never said nothing nice to me in 30 years. <laughs> okay, then. Well, I made a mistake, you know, and then it was like immediately like, well, where do we go? Well, the arc is over there. Okay. Edge of town, you say? Uh huh. All right. Bye. Not, Mm -hmm. you know, but that's, but that's also what sparked the love conversation. Like, why is she waiting around to die? Oh, she was in love. Right. Right. You know, so that sparked the love conversation and that carried itself through in three separate convos, because as we all know, in storytelling, everything happens in threes. So Loki threesome confirmed. They are so going to have sex. (laughs) They are so going to get it on. And you know what? You know what? You know what? Look look at them two right here, right? You can see it happening. You can see it happening. Yeah, and someone's going to write a fan fiction right now. As we they already about. have. I guarantee you. Tumblr at this point is just alive and well with, with fanfic about, about Sylvie and Loki getting busy. What, what would their couple name be? It would be something like Sylvie because they both end up like, anyway. Anyway, we're not going to go. I'm not going down into the fan shipping department because I generally hate that crap. But, but this is pretty heavy handed in regards to the relationship stuff. And I know I focused entirely way too much time on it, but anyway, this episode was fantastic. I absolutely adored it. I can't wait to see what happens next week. I think they're going to start ramping up the budgets and ramping up the action. Yeah, we're halfway through the show, man. So I know, I know Like from this point, I think it's going to be nonstop big reveals and action. I really do. I know. I, uh, and plus I want to know what's going on with this Loki here that I have in the poster where he's like running for president or something. Yeah. I still want to know what that's about. He has like what the Hungarian guards behind him too. It's like, what the heck is up with this image? I want to yeah. know the story behind this. So, and we'll get there eventually. Although this could uh, technically be another variant of Loki. We, we, we really have no idea at this point in time, but you know what? We're going to find out. And so we'll be here next week talking about it. If you guys want to know more, uh, let uh, ask questions in the comment section. Let us know your thoughts, your theories. And we will talk to you guys next week. Please be sure to 
like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.